Am I doing this right? How does their son become so good at reading and writing when he's only four? Are we the only ones not buying the latest app that claims to make kids smarter in three weeks? These are some of the crazy concerns I've heard from other parents. Crazy, but they are valid concerns. Of course, I had these questions myself at some point. After all, I'm still new to this and I'm still learning about parenthood and homeschooling. And it's easy to be influenced by what you see and what you hear from other people. So if you're like me and have been overwhelmed by so many aspects of homeschooling, please stay tuned. And if you're still considering homeschooling, then this video is also for you. Here are 7 critical lessons in overcoming overwhelm. Number 1. Don't compare your child's progress to that of others. You've probably heard of the saying, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes, it's also true in homeschooling. Do you know what the name of that disease is? Comparisonitis. This disease is dangerous. When you start comparing your child's progress to others, it literally steals away your satisfaction with your own child. You see, people nowadays frequently post about their lives on social media, and most of them are even choreographed to appear overly polished. And seeing these kinds of posts regularly can make you feel inferior to their lives. So yeah, perhaps minimize social media and stop comparing your child to others. Number two, stay away from the shiny object syndrome. What exactly is shiny object syndrome? It could be a new popular trend or something you see on TV that a celebrity endorses. This syndrome is common in homeschooling, especially if you are still deciding whether to homeschool your child. Why is the shiny object syndrome bad for you as a homeschooler? Well, think of it as a distraction. Instead of focusing on what you already have, you look into another option because others say it's better than what you have. Of course, it's good. In, in fact, it's fantastic to discover something better. However, However, constantly hopping from one option to another, one app to another, one tool to another will waste your time. It's a fantastic way to waste time. So you must decide when you will commit to one thing, to try it out, to give it a shot, and to allow yourself some time to put it to use, to try it out. Just try it out before you move to another option. Number three. Expect progress rather than perfection. Do you worry about your child's writing? Do you exasperatedly ask yourself, why can't you see the blue line? Why do you go here rather than here? You know, it can get a little exhausting at times. No matter how many times you tell your child not to do certain things, she will continue to do them. And before you give up, remember that you are teaching your child something she has never done before. Learning to write for the first time is not just about writing. It's not only a physical activity. The whole experience of learning has an impact on her psychological, emotional, and spiritual being. Can you imagine the emotional trauma you're inflicting to your child if you lose your temper every time she draws a curve instead of a straight line? Who, oh, after all, is perfect. Is perfection even possible? No, I don't believe so. Even we as parents are not perfect. So why do we expect our children to be perfect? Number four, pick one goal at a time and take it slow. In college, I had a classmate who was dubbed the Son of God. I recall seeing him on every school poster. He consistently won in various competitions such as art, science, dance, and even singing. In addition to that, he was a consistent dean's lister. And he even graduated with magna cum laude. Yeah, probably he's the Son of God. I was amazed by his ability to do all of those things. But at some point, I felt so little comparing myself to him. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And I can't imagine it happening right now. It would probably make me feel even worse. Think about it. We now have free access to other people's lives thanks to social media. Yeah, we admire people who have multiple accomplishments, but deep down, we also wonder what would it be like to be in their shoes? And because we can't do it anymore, we pass the burden to our children. As a parent and homeschooler, I realize how tempting to provide our children with everything we can think of in order to ensure that they perform at their best all of the time. So we invest in a plethora of programs in order for our children to be the best. I haven't gotten there yet though and I hope I don't. But I've seen parents do it and they get overwhelmed with all of their activities. They complain about not having enough time. They complain about being exhausted all the time. It is exhausting not only for the parents but also for their children as well. When someone pointed it out to them, they realized they had crammed their schedule with all kinds of activities. According to Charlotte Mason's principles, education is about atmosphere, discipline, and a way of life. And you 
homeschool because you want to incorporate real life experiences into your lessons and life should be enjoyable so choose one goal at a time and take it one step at a time because you can't make a child learn everything all at once Number five, make your schedule adaptable. Actually, my wife made our schedule and I was determined to show her that I was the best teacher in the world by sticking to it. We have three activities before breakfast, five activities after breakfast, and four more after lunch. After two days, I said I quit. I wanted to quit homeschooling. I was exhausted at the end of the day, feeling unproductive and unaccomplished because we were always running behind schedule. I soon discovered that schedules are not an unbreakable contract. Schedules serve as guides. Yes, having a schedule is beneficial. In fact, it is necessary. But keep in mind that a schedule is a tool and like any tool, you must use it to your advantage rather than against you. Number six, include quiet time in your schedule. I used to believe that only introverts required quiet time. It turns out to be a necessary component of homeschooling. Quiet time is a daily time set aside for everyone to relax and do their own thing. It's just like pressing the refresh button and it will benefit you and your children could be a nap time for them and it could also be your nap time why is it important let's just say you're their source of strength and you pour yourself into them when you take care of them and it can be draining sometimes so in order to rejuvenate and be fully recharged you must take time out of your day to nourish yourself when you take care of yourself you'll be recharged and ready to take care for your children again Number seven, connect with other homeschoolers. I used to believe that homeschooling meant isolating yourself and your child from the outside world. I was completely wrong about that. In fact, the opposite was true. We were even more involved in the community now than we were previously. There are numerous opportunities to be involved in a community when you homeschool. It is a way for your children to socialize and it's also a way for parents to connect with others who can relate to them as a homeschooler. It's like socializing with a purpose. You socialize in order to learn and you socialize in order to offer assistance to others. One benefit of having a community is that it encourages accountability. Knowing that other parent is following the same curriculum and timeline or list of assignments as you provides immediate accountability. You know that they're following the same rules and covering the same ground and you know that if you have a tough day you can reach out and ask for help from someone who is on the same path as you. Another advantage is the sharing of the burden. Circumstances can overwhelm you at times, especially if you're on your own. A community of like-minded parents provides you with something you might not get on your own, such as a new perspective on a problem. Sometimes what you consider a problem can be another parent's delight. I tell you, there are so many benefits to being in a community when you homeschool. So if you are still considering to go homeschooling, now is the best time to connect with those people who are doing it already and then connect to them ask questions and simply be part of the community and that way you will be able to learn the ins and outs of homeschooling and if it really is for you if it's not then it's fine probably homeschooling is not for everyone but it's a good option especially if you want to provide education to your children that is not confined to the traditional form of education so there you go the seven critical lessons i have learned from my fellow homeschoolers how to overcome overwhelm i hope you learned something useful from this video and if you do then i would be very happy to see your comments in the comment section below all right see you in the next video